Also brought to you by the Boatyard in Fort Lauderdale. Eat local, but stay coastal at the Boatyard Restaurant. The Boatyard is located at 1555 Southeast 17th Street in Fort Lauderdale. That means you can come by boat or you can come by car. Enjoy the nautical atmosphere, whether you sit inside in the cold AC or outside on the patio bar. The Boatyard has something for everyone. Monday through Friday, happy hour, where local favorite is bar bites and handcrafted cocktails. Open for lunch, dinner, and the popular Sunday brunch. And don't forget, ladies' night, every Thursday night from 7 to 10 p.m., where ladies drink free. Dock and dine at the famous Boatyard in Fort Lauderdale. I am sure you'll have a great experience. Clear the airways. The Lunker Dog is on the air. Are you ready? This is the Real Guy Podcast. Welcome to the Real Guy Podcast. I got Lamont Jones in the Lunker Dog Studios today, and it is boat show time, dude. Are you ready for the boat show? Dude, is anybody ever ready for the boat show? Like, well, if you live in inner Fort Lauderdale, like around the boat show, like you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to. Pre-plan your travel. You may have to reroute some different routes that you're used to taking because that thing literally takes over the southeast corner of Fort Lauderdale from 17th Street Causeway to Las Olas along A1A. All Avoid the way, that. All the, way to, all the way to Sunrise Boulevard. All the way to Sunrise. Well... I mean, it's not like years ago when they actually had a crowd going and you just avoid it totally because it would take you literally two hours to get from Sunrise to 17th Street Causeway. Now it's just a major inconvenience. It takes you about 20 minutes. <laughs> right. Well, I, I, I totally abort. I abort Fort Lauderdale during the Fort Lauderdale boat show. I do all my trips down in the south. I get out of here. I get on 95. I just totally abort. Even though I got two boat ramps that are like a quarter mile from my house. Like, I don't even play with the boat show no more. Well, you gotta. They take over. Right. They just squat on the waterways on the intercoastal and the New River. The only two decent waterways left in Broward County. And they take it over for nothing. <laughs> to show off. To show off. Like the guy, the guys that uh, got the mega yachts now have basically taken over the boat show. Like if you're right. like if like if you're selling a, a twenty five foot boat, thirty foot boat, even like all the way up to like a thirty five foot boat now, what the hell are you doing, bringing that shit to the Fort Lauderdale boat show? First of all, you got dealers. Then you got the internet. All the stats, everything you need to know is right online. So what are those fools doing at the boat show? And then the mega yacht dudes, I don't get that. You got all that dough to buy a mega yacht, and you're going to inconvenience yourself to go to that sorry-ass boat show with all those losers down there? And when I mean losers, I mean like major losers. Well, I mean, we're going back. You've, how many boat shows have you been to, Jeff? 40? I participated in over fucking 30. And over 30 boat shows. Four and Lauderdale I, boat shows. And when I mean participated, I'm talking about full display. With boats in there. You're wearing slacks. Khakis. Dress socks. Sports blazers. Um, top siders. Yep. Like all that. I've been in air-conditioned boat show. I've been out in the sun boat show. I'm talking about spending 20000 bucks to be there. 20000 just for your, uh, your square footage. Right. And you know what you get for 20000 Your square footage. A nice kick in the balls. Nothing. Nothing. Matter of fact, when we first started doing social media and YouTube and all that, like I used to get in like massive arguments with my family because, you know, we we're in the boat building business and we do the boat shows and we'd spend twenty, thirty thousand 30,000 bucks on each one of these boat shows. And we didn't even have a fucking website. And now we get into it with the family because I'd be like, dude, we need to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month on internet marketing, on right. website, on YouTube video. But this was, you know... 15 years ago before people got it. And I understand the argument then. But now people are still attending that fucking thing? Well, you got nobody that lives in real Fort Lauderdale proper. And by real Fort Lauderdale proper, I mean basically north of the airport to the commercial sort of halfway between Atlantic 
and no west of US-1. Right. You know, maybe a couple blocks just west of US-1 in a couple areas. But for the most part, east of US-1 from the airport to just before Pompano. Nobody in that area goes to the boat show. They either already own a boat, they're not interested in owning a boat, or they're not interested in dealing with that kind of riffraff that shows up to that thing. All those people that are at that boat show all commute from Pembroke Pines, Margate, Coral Springs, Parkland, Hollywood Hills, Dude, all they, that. Right. And, and all the other Parklands and Hollywood Hills and Coral Springs of the world fly in. Right. And then I feel bad for like the people like um, in the Carolinas and stuff. Because they fly down here thinking that if they're not here, they're going to miss something. Right. You can come here anytime and see these boats. Anytime. Anytime. Except without the traffic. And without the freaking abortion that they yeah. do down there on yeah. A1A. <laughs> I mean, seriously. If you're in the market for 150 footer... What motivates you to come down here when all this trash is here? Right. What motivates you when you, you can know. come down on any given Wednesday with no traffic? Park in the convention lot, get in the shuttle, sit next to a loser. We have a road called Marina Mile. Right. What the hell do we need a boat show for? I don't know. And then they show up to the boat show and they do shit like they never do. How many bad beers are drink are drank drunk? At a boat show. <laughs> How many bad Those beers? Those medium warm kegs that they've been pushing for decades? Flat, warm, <laughs> eight bucks for like a 12-ouncer. If you want like a 30-ouncer, a like a big cup or whatever, or quart or whatever the hell they got down there, people got no problem spending 15 bucks on a bad beer. That's why I always respected Bursa, man, because he just marched onto people's mega yachts and drank their champagne and ate their cheese blocks. <laughs> That's true. You remember that? Yeah. Well, what year was that? And That's if you like guys, 2005, 2006. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, is we've been making we've been making fun of the boat show since 2005, 2006, right? Yeah. And old Bursa, man, we actually did a YouTube video or multiple YouTube videos on. The boat shows. And if you haven't seen that, you should watch it because that is the epitome of what you should be doing at a boat show if you're going to go. Is that like Bursa? Exactly. But, dude, there's dudes that show up there that, like, are serious. Like, got their stat sheet and stuff. Stat sheets. There's guys on there that can tell you the buoyancy uh, differences between a CV and a yellow fin. They know the corporate... Um, corporate structure at Boston Whaler and what's wrong with their pricing things and they own nothing. Right. They don't even have a boat. But they can tell you that the yellow fin is so much better than the CV because of this displacement and, and whatnot or another. They don't own a damn boat. They walk around that thing. But they're boat experts. Boat experts. They've glommed tickets off a corporate sponsor like an Accardi motor vehicles or somebody that bought like a dozen tickets for the boat show. And then you got these boatless dudes that call up everybody in town and are like, Hey, I'm looking for four for Sunday, trying to take the family down there. Dude, what are you bringing your family to the boat show for? Well, they got to pick, they got to, you know, you, it's important to bring your wife. Right. Because she has to pick out like colors, carpet, drink holders. And then you need somebody to drag you down while you're at the boat show. Like, you can't go to the boat show and be perfectly happy, like a barbecue or something. Right. Somebody in the family is going to drag you down. You know why? Because it sucks. The boat show sucks. Boat show sucks. You got the guy, he's there with his wife because she has to approve of the cup holders and the color of the seat piping. But also bring your toddler along. You're only going to walk 12 to 15 miles. Right. <laughs> it's a perfect place for a two-year-old that needs his hand held the whole time. And is going to be sunburned, thirsty, and hungry nonstop. Right. And why are the parking lots to the boat show west of Federal Highway? Dude, you get on a bus west of Federal Highway, and then they take you on a bus. I didn't even know that. Where's the parking now? Like over by Blockbuster or uh, IMAX. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got parking all through there. Yeah. So you park your car there, you get on a bus, it brings you down to A1A, you sit in traffic on the bus. Then 
You go to Bahia Mar, which is two miles away from the convention center. Now, if you're a T-topper, center console, flats boat dude, a lot of that stuff is in the convention center. Except when you go to the convention center, it's like ghosts in there. Ghosts. You just walk around, there's like five people looking it's an at the echo. You can hear like faint music in the background coming out of the speakers that are on the ceiling. It's like crazy cold because there's not enough people in there to warm the place up. And the convention center is basically a scam. All those poor bastards that are paying 10,000 bucks per thousand feet or whatever to be in the convention center are getting robbed. Big time. Big time. It's ICAST, but instead of being popping corks, it's center consoles. <laughs> well, if you own a personal watercraft, do you feel obligated to go to the boat show? Yes. Right? You're a, not, what is it, a personal watercraft? Right. Yeah. You're, you're in. You're, no, you're obligated. You're equal to somebody that has a center console, a sport fish, even a mega yacht. Even if you just have a three-person um, sea-do. Then you're obligated. You're obligated to go. If you have personal watercraft, what do you think the average the average time planning in advance to go to the boat show? Months. Three months? Three months. Six months? Three months out. They know what they're going to wear, what shirt they're going to wear that screams, hey, I'm one of you. <laughs> and that's where the uh, term boatier than you are came from. Right. Because... During the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, not like Fort Lauderdale's not ridden with it anyway, there's people walking around that their number one purpose is to make sure that you know that they are boatier than you are. Yes, it's a be seen, seen and be seen thing. So, like once a year, some people get off on those class reunions. <laughs> You right, know, right. Hey, yeah, yeah, they go to every class reunion, you see the same people you saw five years previously. The other, the flip side of that coin are the guys that want to be seen or see other people at the boat show. And there's certain landmarks that you can kind of hang around and you're pretty much sure you're going to bump into the same people every year going back 30, 35, 40 years. You do know what the number one landmark in the boat show is, right? No. You don't? Uh-uh. What are you talking? It's the floating bar. Ah. The floating bar. They used to only have one floating bar, so everybody could meet at that one floating bar. And that was on the south side of Bahia Mar, like in the first, you know, like probably C Dock. A Dock is where all the loser charter boats are. Then two docks in is C Dock. That's where the floating barge was. But then they had to put a <laughs> they had to put another bar. On the north side of the boat show. Vodka drinkers. Vodka drinkers. These people, the draft beers and everything, they've moved beyond that. They've moved to the eight-ounce plastic cup vodka and cranberry or vodka and soda. So they're just all there at that floating dock thing. Right. And the guy who would normally wear flip-flops, you know, your average trust funder that wears flip-flops five, six days a week, he's going to put on the Sperry's for the boat show. Sperry's. Do they got enough common sense not to wear their fancy flip-flops at the boat show? Because at ICAST, I mean, those people were totally sporting the piss out of their fancy flip-flops. As bad as ICAST was, you can cover everything in an hour. Right. You're only walking, say, from your hotel. You're only putting in about four, five to seven miles walking at ICAST, where it's 12 to 15 yeah. at the boat show. And if ICAST had regular... Uh, Hotels and stuff instead of Vegas style, you could really get it done like in like a mile and a half. Yeah, most of the walking we did at ICAST was from the hotel to the venue to yeah. the venue, which were connected, but it was like a mile away. I don't know. And then, how much more is a boat show dude willing to pay up for his hotel room during the boat show? Like if the hotel room was normally 150 bucks and a guy could, you know, totally like, you know, swing that to stay on Fort Lauderdale Beach. How much more is he willing to spend? Three times. He'd probably go up to 450 to stay at the W or the Harbor Beach. That's actually a bargain. Well, it's 50 bucks a day to park. $50 a, a day, day to park. And it takes you an hour to get in there to park and an hour to get out. 
if you don't leave at the at uh, the end of the show. Because if you leave at the end of the show, when all like the badge wearing losers are there <laughs> and they're all leaving at the same time, those buses are packed and they're hot. I mean, seriously, it could take you two and a half hours to get out of the boat show at the end of the day. <laughs> and do you see what they do to the intercoastal every year? Yep. Yeah. How do they, they get out of wild? Cross well, them out of Well, I'm just saying, how do they get away with just totally destroying the intercoastal for a month out of every year? So these rich people can go look at their mega yachts, and so the personal watercraft people can go look at cup holders? Yeah, just tear the intercoastal up. Dredge it. Put in some pilings. <laughs> right? Ridiculous. And the same so-called environmentalists the ones that are going to save all the turtles and the ones that are going to clean up all the water are the same losers that are walking the docks at the <laughs> show. <laughs> exactly. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, been, maybe we've been in this town too long. Maybe we just don't appreciate it. Do we not appreciate the right, boat like show? Let's hand out our environmentalist pamphlets at the boat show while they displace like all the land crabs, the fiddlers... And all the shallow water, you know. Everything. Dig up the dig the place up. And then, right, walk around the boat show. Or even have a display in the boat show to save the turtles or to save the environment. CCA will be in there. FWC will be in there. It's been a couple of years since I've been. Do they still have the guy with the big mandolin knife thing that can chop onions, celery, green peppers? In the tent. He's in the tent. He's with in the tent. Kind of headset like we kind of are wearing right now, so <laughs> hooked up to it, a guitar amp, and he's like, "Watch this thing chop celery." Right, you can make salads in 15 seconds. That guy's in there. He's still in there. Right, he floating got... hat, still there. How much is it this year? Forty nine bucks. Forty nine bucks for a floating hat. Forty nine, dude. Look. And then, and I, I, you want to know what the real slap in the face is <laughs> when you walk into one of these booths and they want to give you a koozie oh my god <laughs> and it's that little flimsy over designed one that can like pack flat you know what i'm talking about it's not even a solid like neoprene koozie that actually works this thing's kind of like just a sort of rubberized slip it's the one that ends up underneath your car seat right how many of those can you get underneath your car seat 50 and then when people are like dude where's my koozie that's where you go, right underneath your car seat, because that's exactly where it belongs. But that's like the biggest slap in the face. Like you walk in, you're looking at their stuff, drink holders, <laughs> you know, you're looking at, you know, like you said, the knives. And the guy's like, dude, have a free koozie. 3,000 square foot house we're sitting in. I ain't got one koozie in this son, bitch. And someone want to give me one? Because I'm at the boat show? I have one in my place. It's flat, and it's in the drawer where I have my batteries and all that stuff. And it's the one that folds flat. Right. You know? So it was just like a handy. Like, they just hand them out, like business cards. Like, here you go. And I just ended up with that one. Like, years ago when the boat show had class, they'd give you, like, good stuff. Like, they'd give you that little uh, keychain holder that floats. That looks like a buoy? Right. Yeah. So you could keep your registration in there, and then if your keys fell in the water, it would actually float. Yeah. And then you could you could sport that around town, and you could be boatier than everybody else when you had <laughs> People that. People would see that and be like, oh, that guy's got a boat. Or they'd be like, oh, that guy was at the boat show. Right. But they would give you that, you know, which you could sport that a little bit. But you're not sporting that flat-ass koozie. No. And then they're giving the, the half of more than half of those koozies are given to those losers by the beer distributors that are whacking people eight bucks a for co-op, the, right? For the bad beer, a co-op. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm you know like offhand, I'm trying to think of like, is there anything good, anything at the boat show anymore? Well, the food sucks. Right? They'd argue about that. People would, people would get in a screaming argument with you about the food at the boat show. And I don't get that because they eat shit at the boat show that they would never eat on a, any other place or any other day. Like, who the hell walks around with fried conch? 
standing up, walking around. Right. <laughs> a bunch of napkins in one hand and a little uh, container in the other. Right. And if you're lucky enough, where well, you brought your hoe with you to the boat show, she'd carry your beer for you while you walk around with the uh, fried conch. But who the hell eats fried conch not sitting down in a restaurant? Boat show people. Mm. And then what's up with the boat show dude that goes to multiple boat shows? Like in a couple of weeks, he'll be in the Fort Pierce. Oh, yeah, or even even more ridiculous is, okay, so you got Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, which is always around Halloween. They, they shoved it off to like the first week in November now. So you go to Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, and you, get, you spend the dough on the parking and the bad food and the bad beer, and you get your koozie there. Right after the holidays, then you got the Miami Boat Show, which is another abortion. And then you go there. And then right around Easter time, you got the Palm Beach Boat Show. And there's dudes not getting paid that are going to all three boat shows. All three. <laughs> and bragging Shaking about it. Shaking hands with the same people at every boat show. And bragging about it. And that was like one of the hardest things to deal with when we used to do the boat shows like that. Because we'd have the display and we're looking for new clients and, you know, we're trying to do the best job we can. And here comes old Schlappy. Walking down the aisle, knowing that he's going to come right in your booth to ask you the same shit that he asked you at the last boat show. And then you have to, like, force yourself to talk to him. And that's where the real energy is taken up at the boat show when you're working there. The amount of energy that it takes to talk to that dude or to avoid that dude or to talk to somebody else so you don't have to talk to that dude is immense. I mean, you're talking about major energy. If you didn't have those fools, it'd be way easier, put it that way. And wouldn't take up near the energy and you wouldn't feel totally exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's just... i tell you one good thing about the boat show. There's hot chicks walking around the boat show. They're getting paid. Well, I don't care. At least there are some hot chicks. There were hot chicks that I cast. Were they in there? Were getting paid? All the hot chicks that I cast were getting paid. Every single one. Every hot chick on the planet is getting paid. There's some. Well, they're getting paid one way or the other. But there's some hot chicks at the boat show that aren't on payroll. Now they may be still getting paid, but they're not on payroll. Right. They're not. They're not collecting receipts and stuff. Did you see the girls last night flashing at the World Series? No. Yeah, they were flashing the pitcher, which the pitcher d didn't see them. Those guys are so dialed in. Like flashing? What do you mean, like showing boobs. Them their boobs? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They they make one hundred twenty five thousand a month on Instagram. Really? The two chicks. And they flash people. Well, they like had their T shirt on. They had their dot com on it, and they were lifting up their shirt, trying to get you know to um you know, get under the skin of that pitcher, but those pitcher dudes are dialed in. Oh, you think? Like, those guys just aren't, like, scanning the crowd, like, oh, let me see if check out any tits. They're pretty much, like, staring <laughs> at one speck on that catcher's glove. You know? Boat show, you've got those hot chicks that cigarette. Are they still doing that? No. No? No. Dude, they haven't done that for 15 years. The cigarette <laughs> crowd doesn't even... The cigarette crowd is looking down their nose at the boat show at this point. There was a time when the cigarette crowd <coughs> took up about a third of the boat show. What I mean by cigarette crowd is I'm talking about fast boats. I'm talking about, like, wanting to go 100 miles an hour. And that was an element of the boat show. But those people are somewhat real. They're willing to spend... Purchasers. Right. They're willing to spend serious money, time, and effort on making those boats go fast. It's not for them no more. Same with the sport fishing people. Sport fishing people used to show up at the boat show years ago, and their main purpose was, like, how can I tweak my sport fishing boat so I can catch more fish? Totally extinct now. Those people are not there. What you do have at the boat show now in the sport fishing market is you have the captains that are sporting the piss out of the owner's credit card, and they are just buying shit. The owner hardly even shows up. 
if he does show up, he'll go to like one boat or hang out in the penthouse suite over there at BMR. They're way up top. And the captain is downstairs with the credit card. With the black card. Right. Buying another drink electronics. holder. Electronics. <laughs> another drink holder. No, no, those guys are like buying whatever the latest and greatest thing is because of the boss. And when they're walking around the boat show, they tell you what they're doing. And they mention the word boss, like, in every other sentence. Well, the boss says, the boss says, the boss says. Yeah. And if you get one of those dudes in your booth, that's like your, your modern-day home run. Years ago, it was like, okay, if you can get the dude in the booth that actually, you know, has the funds and energy to buy a sport fishing boat, that was the guy you were looking for. Not so much anymore. The guy with the black card, the captain. Who's rolling around there that has the expense account? That's the dude you're looking for. You know what I mean? You can actually make money with that dude. Everybody else there is just taking up space. How many boat shows without buying a boat should you go through before you just say, that's it? I'm done. Me personally? To, to the average guy that lives in the 954 area code west of 441 who has to get on 595 off some um, avenue that we've never heard of. And like, okay, you moved down here. You just moved down here from Jersey or Philly. The boat show is an exciting thing. You can't really beat up somebody for attending their first. They don't know. Right. Then you've gone a second time. You haven't bought a boat. Third time. Now you know you're not buying a boat. Right. Well, this is when the whole boatier than you are comes in because the dude from Coral Springs that drove to the boat show that went to his first one was like, whoa, these people are way boatier than I am. Yeah. So then they go to the Palm Beach boat show and they're like, okay, if I buy that shirt and that yeah. hat, I'll be kind of boaty. By their fourth or fifth boat show, they got it. And then they're in almost like a competition level. And I don't know, a dozen They'll go to a dozen shows and try to be boatier than everybody else. And at that point, they either are boatier than everybody else or they totally give up. I'm not going to go this year, so I'm going to ask a favor of our listeners. Those of you that are still going to go even after listening to this podcast. <laughs> when Jeff and I went up to ICAST, what was that, in August? Uh, July. July? It was obvious that the foam... Seafoam green PFG fishing Columbia fishing shirt was the shirt to wear that, at ICAST. That was the official shirt of ICAST. Everybody was wearing those things. We got to get you guys to locate and figure out which is the number one shirt of the 2019 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show by taking a couple pictures with your phone, and we'll come out with a, um, with a prize for the guy that submits the most... Most of the same shirts, you know, very similar. Doesn't it? They all don't have to be Columbia's or whatever, but similar in color and style submits the most photographs from the 2019 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show to the Real Guy Lunker Club on Facebook. <coughs> you should make this. You should make this for the people that are working at the boat show. Like if you work at the boat show and you take the shots because they're the ones that, you know, they, it's torture. They're there for five days. Five days <laughs> from 10 o'clock in the morning to basically 9 o'clock at night. So the people working at the boat show are going to be the main people. I'm not saying everybody else is excluded, but it's nice to give them something. Yeah, yeah. You know, to do while they're there besides try to avoid. Yeah, so do it. If you're there for long amounts of time or whatever, take the most Candid photos of people wearing similar shirts, be it male, female, children, or anything. It'll be obvious. Once you get in the main concourses, either at the convention center or there at Bahiamar, you should be able to immediately be like, oh, this year it's salmon pink. Oh, everybody's wearing <laughs> that, that um, taupe brown color. And start snapping away and uploading to the Real Guy Lunker Club. We'll have a real prize for you. <laughs> now, now, all right. If I, if I hired a helicopter, if I chartered a helicopter, and I could fly you in to drop you wherever you wanted in the boat show, what would you, what would you wear? 
What would I wear? Yeah. Dropping me right in? Like, everybody at the boat show is going to know that you're coming to the boat show because we got you on the helicopter. So you're going to be the spectacle, the rock star, the rock star boat show doer. It'd be coral linen um, Bermuda shorts at the knee. Not above the knee or below <laughs> the knee. Right in the middle of the kneecap. Knickerbockers. Yep. Okay. A probably between $120 to $140 sandal, flip-flop, nice. designer sandal, a good one. Tommy Bahama? Yep. Okay. And then for the shirt, it would probably be, I said coral for the pants, so like a white with a blue and green print Tommy Bahama button down, button front. Nice. Shirt. And then some, whatever frame Costa with the 580 lenses in it. <laughs> right. You need those at the show. Yeah. And holders for them. A, um, a lanyard or a stirrup that goes around your neck to keep from falling down. Because nothing says that you boat more than having something to attach to your sunglasses. That's true. What about jury? Huh? What about jury? Jewelry? Yeah. I've always wanted a coin from that Atosha wreck down there in the Keys. So you'd wear the coin on your neck? Yeah. Because they either go for the coin, yeah. the anchor, yeah. the shark's tooth is a big one still. Propeller? Propellers, yeah, propeller's pretty good. The chicks wear, like, starfish yeah. and shells. What are, you, what, what are you rolling for watch? For watch, it's... I, I'm not going to go Rolex. I'm going to go that Breitling yachting series. The guys that work, at the, the guys that are working at the show, they're doing Rolexes. Right. But the guy that flies in the helicopter is doing what? He's doing America's Cup Series Breitling watch. <laughs> so everybody, Julian has one. We'll get him to demonstrate his. I know he's got like an America's Cup watch. Julian, Julian might set the record for the most boat shows, consistent boat shows. Yeah. At least he's got some boats. Yeah, you guys don't remember Julian. Julian, uh, that's Julian Siegel from Tarpon River um, Brewing Company. We do a lot of stuff with him, and he's pretty boaty. Yeah, he's way boaty. He's always, he's always been way boaty too. Right, it's nothing new. No, nope. and he's got that watch. He's got the Submar Submariner Rolexes. He wears those, but I know from past experience from one time from him shoving it in my face that he had like an America's cup version of the Breitling watch or some kind of, um, commemorative sailing <laughs> watch that the, you know, 10, $20,000 piece. Right. And what about, um, <laughs> what about the dudes that are like, uh, that are at the show? And they're calling people on their cell phone while they're at the show to tell them people that they're there, that they're at the show. Yeah. That goes back to one of our first points was see and be seen. Like the worst thing that could happen is that you went, say, on that opening Thursday and paid the 50 to park, you know, finagled your tickets, however you were able to get them, whatever, bought a, um, a small order of crack conch for twelve ninety five. <laughs> right. And then saw nobody because it's the early Thursday. And maybe you saw like a couple of vendors that you recognize from previous boat show people, but no real Fort Lauderdale yachties were there yet. You didn't get to, you know, rub elbows and talk about the new 36 whaler with anybody. Are there any real Fort Lauderdale yachties left? A couple. It's a couple. Most of the yachties here, are like South African, Australian, they got it uh, somewhere with like that, you know, English accent yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's the vast majority. We're opposed to like 20 years ago when you met somebody like that. You're like, oh, dude, a South African dude. Right. Right. And it was like exceptional. Now that's the norm. Now just go anywhere off Cordova down there and throw a rock and you hit one of them. Dude, it, I figured it out. They're the ones that are taking up all the apartments in town. The Yachties. Yeah. Because, dude, how many, how many apartments have they built downtown Fort Lauderdale in the last 10 years? 10,000. How many people have you, do you, have you ever met that lives in one? Zero. Right. So that has to be the Yachties through process of elimination. When those people come into town, they put them up there in those types of apartments. So there are a lot of one ones and two ones in those buildings. 
Oh, you mean room sizes? Yeah. One ones and two ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they put the captain up in a one one. And that's somewhere in a pretty boaty place. You see the ones they built out there off 84 Marina Ma- or in uh, Marina Bay? Yeah. All captains in there. And a lot of those are a little bit bigger. So maybe the engineer, but usually the chick that works on the boat ends up in the same. And some weird stuff is going on right. in there. Yeah. Like really weird. Yeah, no. If the people that watch Below Deck and all that, they know. Those <laughs> things, that, it's the devil's concubine. That's the reality show for the Yachties? Yeah. They like that show. It's hugely that show popular. Grows. That show goes. Huh. Very popular. Yeah. Well, the fishermen, this is, this, is, this, is, this is a good one. This is a good one. You know, like at the baseball games, guys show up with their glove, <laughs> right? And you know, guys fo- like Joey? Yeah, they show up at the baseball game and they got their baseball glove. Yeah. And if they're a Mets fan, they got their Mets hat. Yeah. And they, just like the boat show people, will eat shit there that they don't normally eat at other places and they're willing to spend that crazy dough to eat that crap. Right? And at the football games, a guy may have a helmet on and the jersey. Yeah. Are, there, are there fishermen rolling around the boat show with their combo? With their rod and reel? Maybe Not so much box? with the rod and reel, but they're dressing up to let people know that there's two ways you can dress up. We're going to have a podcast in a little while about this subject here, but we're going to tease it right now, which is how to look like a guide or a captain and how to look like a mate without being either. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a strategy yeah. going on there. Right. It's not so much in Fort Lauderdale <clears throat> where the taxes are higher and cost of living is kind of crazy, but you start getting up into Pompano, <laughs> Where a lot of guys try to look like mates. Pompano, the T-top capital of the world? Exactly. Okay. You know what I mean? Pompano, where guys own sets of internationals before they own their own boat. Right. Right. That, that's an epidemic in Pompano. It's, it, goes, it, it filters into the Palm Beach County and a little bit further north. But it doesn't migrate south so much. Like, the people in Miami aren't so much like that. That's like Pompano North. Right. <laughs> How to look like a mate without being one, and how to look like a captain without being one. And how to walk around the boat show, and people will be like, who's that guy? Dude, he's a nobody. He's just dressing up like he's a captain. Okay? They're all over the place. There's a, there's a guide look also. There's a guide look. If, you're, if, you, if you got the guide look, there's three places you have to be seen at the boat show. Number one place is the Hell's Bay booth. For sure. Even if you're, even if you fucking got a Carolina skiff and that's what you roll on the flats with, nothing wrong with that. If you go to the boat show, and you want to portray yourself as a guide, Hell's Bay booth is the number one place to be. Second, is the fly fishing, um, display, where the guy sh- showing people how to fly fish. The casting pond. Yeah, the casting pond. So, like, you know, they got lefty or some uh, some famous dude up there, and he's showing people how to fly cast. And it's cool just to be, like, on the side. You know what I mean? Just to be part of the crowd. And then thirdly, because they're in the air conditioning, is the place where you get your beers. The beers that you get in the convention center are acceptable. Like, you can get a decent cold draft there. And yeah, it's still you're paying too much for it, but it's somewhat acceptable. It's way different than the draft you're getting at Bahiamar. Outside at the medium warm keg. Right, at the little trailer. Like if that doesn't if that do, if that doesn't if that doesn't tell you something that they're selling beers out of a trailer. Yeah. But then again, you know, and, and we can wrap it up on this. You know, my dad taught me at the boat show something. That I'll never forget. And he told me, he goes, Jeff, he goes, this is the only place in the world where the smartest dudes with the most money in the world all show up and make the poorest decisions of their life. <laughs> and then they get together and celebrate afterwards. All right. Is that not wrap up? High five. That is, that's a perfect wrap for it. All right. So anyway, we will not see you at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show this year. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to go live when I'm fishing down in Miami while you losers are at the boat show. And um, feel free to give us a report. You can just email Jeff at LunkerDog.com if you are at the boat show and you think there's something that Lamont and I need to know. Um, also, don't forget about the contest that we're going to do. You guys are going to pick what the official shirt war wardrobe of the boat show is, mainly shirts and hats. And um, make sure you stay tuned to the Real Guy Podcast. Make sure you give us a rating on iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. And... Uh, not sure what else I can actually say about the boat show. I'm pretty much done. I think that's pretty much it. Hmm. Well, there is another good thing about the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show before we have up. There's a basketball court right across the street yeah. that they can't get rid of during the boat show. So if you guys aren't sporting your combos at the boat show or your flip-flops, or your shirts, or whatever, bring a basketball, and you can take a quick break and go across <laughs> the street and get a few, few shots in. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to the Real Guy Podcast. That's Lamont Jones. This is yep. Captain Jeff. And uh, run that dog. Run it.